Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Mini Electric. I actually went to the UK launch of this car about six months ago, so if you haven't seen that video, it will be up here in a link somewhere. I was here at BMW Mini HQ about three weeks ago when I dropped the M2 CS off, and I happened to see this car half finished in the car park. I inquired about it and it's actually Mini's accessory version of the Mini E, so it's absolutely covered in Mini accessories. A bit like the M2 competition that I had right at the beginning of this year that had the wing and the carbon bonnet etc, I thought it was really interesting to show you guys and girls what you can actually have put onto your Mini Electric. What I love most about this car and what really caught my eye was the fact that it just looks like a normal Mini Cooper S with some John Cooper Works bits on it. I love the fact that it's not shouting, look at me, I'm an electric car. There are a couple of telltale signs that have to be on here for, let's say, the fire service reasons if it's in an accident, just to let them know that it's definitely an electric car. So this yellow badging that's on the front and the rear but the rest of it's really unique. So let's have a quick walk around and look at some of the parts in here. The donor car of this particular Mini Electric is a level two, so middle of the range, if you like, 27,000 pounds on the road before you start throwing some of these Mini accessories on it. Around the front end, we have this gloss black trim, which goes around what would be traditionally known as the radiator grille. Moving up a bit, we've got a lovely black Mini badge and that also continues around the back, which we'll look at soon. We've got a carbon fiber air intake, although it's not an air intake or bonnet scoop because it's actually fake, but it does look good, especially from a bit of a distance. The headlights have also got a lovely black surround to them, continuing from the theme of the grille here. As we get along the side of the car, the most obvious are the JCW wheels. Now they're very nice and they are the most expensive accessories on this particular car. In fact, I'm going to list all of the RRPs of the accessories below in the description. None of those prices include fitting, so just check with your local dealer. Within the wheels, we've also got the John Cooper Works self-leveling centre cap, so a bit like the ones you see on a Rolls Royce and in fact, I've got some on my 7 Series. They're really cool and it means anytime you get a picture of this car, the John Cooper Works is always the right way around. Moving up from the wheels, we've got these carbon side scuttles. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of them. If I'm being honest, I'd prefer them just to be black, but everyone's got different taste. Then we have the black waistline mouldings. I think that's what it's called. So effectively this, which is normally chrome on the majority of minis, is black and I think that really finishes and makes this car look really aggressive. I love it, especially with this grey paintwork. I'm not sure what the actual technical colour name is for this paint, but let's just call it grey for argument's sake. As we move back, we've got black door mirror caps and black handles. And on the roof, it might look black from there, but it's actually got a lovely big JCW on it and a thin pinstripe on it of red, which really does set the car off, especially when you walk up to it and you can see it properly. Right at the back, we've got a shortened aerial as well, which again, just gives this car a bit more of a sporty sort of appearance. Around the back, the theme continues and we've got a carbon fiber, I think they call this the boot lid grip. On top of that, we've got another black mini badge, which is the same as the one on the bonnet. And then we've got some lovely Cooper S black badging. Not sure how I think about the Cooper S badging on an electric car, but it's a bit like Porsche and their Taycan. They're calling that a turbo and a turbo S. So I think it's just gonna have to be something that we get used to. Again, we've got the yellow badging on the back here that I talked about. So that tells you and tells the fire brigade, God bless, if you're in an accident, that this is an electric car. As you can see, the rear lights also have a black surround and the waistline black trim continues all the way around the car. So just really sets this thing off. It looks fantastic. I have to say there's nothing to me aside from the yellow badging that shouts electric car. And that's a massive win as far as I'm concerned. Let's have a quick jump inside. There's a couple of things inside, but not much. And then we'll take it off and head into town. Jumping inside, I love a mini cabin. 
I love the fact they've got so much space. I did talk about this recently in my GP3 video where I was actually wearing a helmet and had no issues with headspace, which very rarely happens to me. It's funny how a car that is really so small can provide so much space, especially in the front. Okay, the back is a little bit cramped. In terms of the accessories fitted to this car and the interior, well, I'm looking at one here, the John Cooper Works Alcantara clad steering wheel. It's a little bit fat in terms of the rim for me, but I'm not going to be taking this car on any track days and it is a lovely, pleasing thing to touch and feel. The only other thing fitted to this is the John Cooper Works floor mats, which, yeah, I mean, I've never really been the biggest fan of fancy floor mats because they just get dirty, but I do like the red piping on them and that does contrast very well with the red pinstripe on the roof. Right, let's fire this thing up and take it into London. I think I think that's it. I think I think we're running. Okay, as you've just seen, the weather into London has been pretty bad. So the windscreen wipers have been on, my headlamps have been on. Basically an electric car's nightmare because I'm using all this extra power and juice. When I left BMW HQ, this car was charged at about 95% and I'm now at about 65%. And I've done roughly 45 miles mixed miles and in bad weather it's saying there's about 60 miles left in the range so that's going to give me an overall range of about 110 miles from 95 percent charge which sounds about right because i think owners are getting around 130 realistic miles out of their mini e's i do want to point out that this car is brand new it had eight miles Oh, M760, lovely. It had eight miles on it when I picked it up. So electric cars apparently become far more efficient once they've had 15 or 20 charge cycles put through them. So because this is brand new, the first charge is gonna be nowhere near as good as say the 10th charge. But it's quite nice driving around London, I guess a city in a car that is putting out, it's not putting out zero emissions, that's a lie because there's brake pads, there's tyre wear, where, where did the electricity come from in the first place to charge this car, but it is very clean and it makes for a very nice city car, in fact, you know, it's, um, it's a mini after all, so it's nice and small and compact. I haven't been in town for months now, actually. <laughs> I really try and avoid it. Obviously, I spend a lot of my life here in my chauffeuring car, and that's a long wheelbase 7 series, so somewhat different to this Mini E. But yeah, it's nice being back here. It's reasonably quiet, it's not too bad. Traffic's not too horrendous. I'm going down Sloan Street. Wow, this is a first for me in a video, I think. <laughs> I mean, I am like the last person in the world that would take a car down Sloan Street, but a Mini Electric, I think, can uh, be an exemption. And here I come, going down Sloan Street. There are no car spotters out. Normally they hang around here um, and they are everywhere. I'm not sure they would get too excited by the Mini E, but they would be all the way along here in Sloan Street. Tesla Model 3, yuck. Oh, F12, lovely. Ah, oh, look at that, M5 in individual orange. Is it fire orange? It does look like the M3 GTS I had. Is this Prius gonna see me? Yep. Um, R8 in green, that looks good. Lamborghini Anus, I mean Urus, sorry. I haven't been in London for a few months and it is actually quite interesting seeing how many electric cars have popped up, albeit fairly horrific Teslas. Oh, I've got an S63 behind me, I think. S63 Coupe. Oh, just like that one there in front of me. I have actually got one behind me as well. 
another Model X. Uh, we'll swing up here because Wilton Place and Wilton Crescent are sometimes nice little S4. Turbo S cab. 7.2 I believe. Um, oh, nice. RS6. Yeah, let's just spin around here. Okay, as we're in London, I uh, might as well take you up Park Lane. So we're just approaching Hyde Park Corner here, which is a bit of a busy giant roundabout in London. Let's get out here. And right in front of us, behind those arches, is the statue of Achilles. Some say it's me. Others say it's really not, but anyway. So yeah, we're just heading up now. Buckingham Palace is just down there to the right. Now we're coming up Park Lane. Now I've not been along Park Lane for a while, <laughs> but um, it's probably gonna be busy. There's Achilles statue right in front of us, just in between these buses. There it is. Yeah. Statue of Achilles. Oh wow, what have, what have they done to London? What's happened? Every time I come into London, the road network, they just ruin any of the streets that used to work for the past 40 or 50 years, are now completely ruined. I mean, which line am I meant to follow on the road? Well, I've really enjoyed my time in the Mini E. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my walk around of all the accessories that are available for this car that make it look far more sporty and far more like a combustion engine, Cooper S or even John Cooper Works. I've not really enjoyed my drive around London, I have to say, I'm just really unimpressed by everything. Obviously the, the news of the congestion charge now being 15 pounds, seven days a week, um, I think it's 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. just means that you can't pop into London for dinner of an evening without having to pay for the congestion charge. Now, obviously, if you have got an electric car and you do register it, then you can effectively come in for free. But London just seems like it's just losing the plot slightly. I think the road networks are terrible now. They've completely ruined all of the road networks. Uh, the 20 mile an hour speed limits that they've introduced into every other street, it seems, is just terrible, like shocking, especially down Park Lane. 20 miles an hour down Park Lane. Uh, <laughs> what's happened? And then you've got people on Boris bikes that are just riding anywhere and everywhere. It's almost like a computer game trying to avoid them. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend coming to London at the moment. It really is not the place that it used to be, unfortunately. Really disappointing, especially being born and bred here. In fact, right in front, St. Mary's Hospital. That's where I was born, just there. I'm just gonna head around to my parents for a quick bite to eat before driving home. The car's showing 55 mile range and I live about 20 miles away, so that's not gonna be an issue. Whether or not I can then get it from home tomorrow to Farnborough is another question. I might plug it in at home for a few hours tomorrow morning, but I only have a standard plug socket at home. I don't have a fast charger because I don't have an electric car. So it's only gonna charge at 2.2 kilowatt hours, which basically means if I wanted to charge this car fully, I'd be looking at about 14, 15 hours because it's a 32 kilowatt hour battery in this if that makes sense. But if I had a fast charger installed at home, which I would have if I owned an electric car, it would take about four and a bit hours to charge this completely from empty to full. Always keep an eye out for Uber drivers in London. They are massive hazards. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Remember to check out all of the description below for each of the accessories individualized. He's wearing a nice blue, blue jumper just in case uh, someone misses him as he walks out on the road. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and I will uh, see you at the next video. Cheers guys.